Today, we're diving into the deep world of Azure DevOps, and I'm going to show you exactly what you need to focus on in 2015 to level up your game. Quick background is I've been in the trenches of Azure DevOps for well over seven years now, and the platform has evolved significantly, really. But don't worry, I'll cut through the noise and show you what actually matters. So first thing you might want to ask is what exactly is Azure DevOps? So Azure DevOps is a suite of development tools provided by Microsoft to support the entire software development lifecycle. It encompasses things like planning, developing, testing, and delivering and monitoring applications. Azure DevOps integrates seamlessly with the popular tools you know and services that you know also, making it a versatile choice for developers and DevOps engineers, project managers, scrum masters to collaborate. The core concept of Azure DevOps is that it's made up of about five main services, and you need to familiarize yourself with those tools. The first one is Azure Bots, and it's used for agile planning and work tracking. Azure Repos is used for your Git repositories, also TFVC, essential for your version control needs. Azure Pipelines is the core of it, especially for DevOps engineers. So what it enables you to do is it enables you to do ci cd continuous integration and continuous deployment and it actually works it really works i've been using it i use it every day and it is amazing you can declare yaml files or if you want to be old school you can use the gui based pipelines which i don't recommend to be honest so azure test plans is also there and of course supplemented sometimes with other tools but it is valuable to know that you can use it to do your automated and manual testing for your apps and also there's azure artifacts which is an efficient package management solution for your internal developers even externally to your organization so what are the changes that has happened over the years and what why should it matter to you in 2020 you can use pipeline templates which are awesome it means you can deploy little chunks of files that are template files the game changer literally so it means that you are you have yaml files that you declare and then you can use those three yaml files as templates for other yaml files that are also templates for other yaml files and also there used to be a yaml inheritance issue now that is fixed uh container build optimization is also there it saves ex many hours a week to be honest now these improvements have made especially for developers made their lives more easier and smoother and more efficient to get started with azure devops to get started with azure devops in 2025 first of course is you need to sign up for azure devops create a new organization and create your first project and then set up your repository and then first thing you do of course just like a programmer you configure your build and release pipeline i recommend you use yaml not the gui so you want to check out using Azure bots to plan and track your work though, you need to check out the Azure test plans to create test plans automated and manual and also manage packages with Azure artifacts. You, I recommend if you really want to learn, go through each of them religiously to understand how they work, especially for your own use cases. If you're deploying apps, focus on CI CICD. If you're a tester, focus on the test plans. If you're a project manager, focus on the uh, work item management Azure board. Just to have a bit of icing on the cake, what I'll do is I'll walk you through an actual kind of production setup, no theoretical, theoretical stuff, where we'll look at how you set up a multi-stage deployment that hopefully will not break at 2 a.m., ensuring that your deployments are reliable and manageable, and then we'll configure branch policies with the repository so we are not overly restrictive and we also implement hopefully some security scanning that is not just noise. So we'll do that demo right about now. To create a multi-stage pipeline in Azure DevOps, we'll go to our pipelines and create our first pipeline. If you have existing pipelines, you'll see them show up in there. And then you go into Azure Repos Git and we'll select for this purpose, our pipeline tutorial repository. So this will be using the default Azure DevOps agent pool, which is Ubuntu latest. You could pick your own. And then we also uh, then have different stages declared here. So we'll see here we have the build, test, and deploy stage. This only has dummy code inside of it, but you can always put in your own defined code for yourself. In the build stage, it's just saying, hey, I am building. In the test stage, I am testing. And then in the deploy stage, I am deploying. So if we go ahead and save this pipeline now, 
and we run it from the main branch you can see we have various stages we can pick and select which stages we want to run but for this stage and demo we would run all and we'll click run and we'll see after a couple of seconds or minutes depending on our availability of build agents we would see our pipelines kick into action If we refresh this page for a little while, we will see that the build stage is done now. If we go to the build stage code, we will see I am from build stage and the test stage should also kick off in a couple of seconds now. But of course, depending on the code you have in that the templates files is used and the agents you're using, this might take longer or shorter than the time I've used in this demo. And then pretty much we have all that done. So you could have build, QA, release gates, and everything set up for your DevOps pipelines right here and then. Now, once this is done, the next thing we'll do is we'll look at how we can set up branch policies to help us prevent match conflicts inside of our repositories. Now, that is pretty much done. So if we go over into our repositories here, we are in the pipelines repository, pipelines the repository, and we see here we have a main branch. So what we want to do is we're going to create a branch policy so that someone would not be able to commit directly to the main branch. So let's create a new branch for this purpose of this demo. Let's call it policy branch. All right, but of course you want to follow proper name and policies for this one and attach a work item and all those nice stuff. So if you now go into this layer here and you go into branches and you go into main and you go to branch policies, you can also configure brand, uh, branch security. You can also require minimum number of reviewers for this purpose because I'm just one here. I'm going to be one. And because I'm the only one in this organization, I'm going to allow the requester to approve the unpo request. But of course, this is not best practice. Also, you want to reset uh, when new changes are pushed. But of course, you can always reconfigure that. You also want to check for linked items, check for comments resolution, required optional, all those nice things. And you can also automatically add reviewers. We will skip this bit for now. We can also check status. You can do build validation. There are a whole lot of wonderful things you can do with it. So, but let's just make this the default one. Require one approval. Allow requesters to approve their own changes, which of course I have mentioned to you that this is not best practice. All right. So let's go now to the main branch. and attempt to commit to the main branch we'll see what will happen here so let's just attempt to modify the readme so let's call this oh i need to click edit over here getting started with azure devops in 2025 i'm just gonna copy that so it's andy and if i did that try to commit to main you will see that I am unable to perform that operation. And that is very good. That is very nice. That is what we hope to achieve. Right. So next thing I want to do now is we'll go now into that other branch that we add, which is the policy branch and commit to that instead. You know what? We're going to stay here and we can comment directly into that branch and create a pull request okay but we wouldn't do that let's do things the right way all right so let's go back into policy branch we don't want to save this operation we modify this and we override what we have done commit to the branch and eat commit here and we want to create a pull request also from that and once we do this you see what will happen it says comments mobile. so let's say we added a comment here there's going to be a red tick over here. 
one person must approve so even if i set autocomplete here if i did all the stuff that i wanted to do okay it will not match until someone has approved okay and then also comments must be resolved so that is done our code is successfully matched you see how cool that is there are best practices for using azure and here are some of them keep in mind that you should regularly update and maintain your repositories your ci cd pipelines to streamline your development and deployment processes use branching strategies to manage code changes effectively also incorporate automated testing to catch issues early and of course you want to collaborate and communicate effectively using azure bot and you need to monitor also how your app is deployed failure rate success rate and all that so you can continually improve your workflow essentially that is what they use for and then some of the common pitfalls you should avoid with using azure devops in 2025 and letting azure devops in 2025 is that hey look we've all been there we are still there i will still be there some of the mistakes that happen which could be an oversight or just you're tired is that you could have over complicated release gates should avoid them if possible keep things simple only add gates that provide real value chat for permission nightmares with service connections and all those sorts it could be a nightmare if they're not properly configured your service connection should write the should have the right role-based access control to Azure resources, should have the right permissions for using other cloud. It's a headache. So ensure that the service connections you're using have the right permissions to deploy stuff. So don't expose secrets in your variable groups. If it's a secret, lock it as a secret. Better connect them to your Azure Key Vault so it handles your sensitive information as sensitive. Now, you can watch out for the future trends that move into Azure github actions in the future are we sticking with azure devops those are some of the things happening in industry there are questions on my mind also so all we can do right now is just watch out we need to just watch the industry and see how it plays but to be honest i don't see and this is my personal view this is not microsoft official view in the next two three five years i don't see azure devops going anywhere enterprises use it microsoft uses it themselves so i see it staying and sticking around side by side with github actions and all the other fancy many beautiful technologies that might come out tomorrow azure devops is this so if you want to learn azure devops this year go learn it and i think pretty much that's where i wrap up that guide to azure devops in 2024 if you have questions put them in comments video description i will drop some links for some learning resources so you can check them out and of course if you have some tips also for beginners if you're an experienced devops engineer put them in the comments and then We'll chat it out. So, uh, of course, I just want to wrap that up to just give you that nice guide for 1025 on learning Azure DevOps. So, I guess till I come away yet and again with another video, you might like this video or this playlist here that I created just for you. So, till I come away again with another video, stay safe and goodbye. I need to really go do some DevOps work now.